Amen. Well, come on. Can you put your hands together? She's going to be bringing the message this morning. Thank you. So normally you would expect on a next gen service that the next gen would stay in the room with us, but they're not today. So you guys can go to your class. Junior high, high school, you guys can head to your classes. Pastor Daniel's very happy to see you. <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning. Um, gosh, you know, I, 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 I came this morning and even just throughout this whole week, I, I've had such a burden on my heart. To, I feel a weight of responsibility to share what I feel the Lord's giving me. And, and, and some of it is, sure, it's about next gen and it's about what we do to, to minister to our kids. But it's also about God's purpose for your life and how God wants to use you to impact the people around you, including the next generation, but to impact the person sitting right next to you to impact your family, to impact your friends, to impact the people you work with. That God has a purpose for you. And I think that, you know, these last couple of weeks we've been talking about Rooted and Joey's been given a couple of really good teachings about connecting with God and connecting with your purpose. I'm sorry, connecting with God and connecting with the church. Today I'm going to talk about connecting with your purpose. I just, I feel like God just has something good for all of you today. It's just really heavy on my heart today. So first we looked, uh, a couple weeks ago, we looked at the story of the prodigal son and how the father knew his son had walked away, but he waited and he watched for him and he sat on his porch with his iPhone and waited. (laughs) Um, And when he saw his son coming, what did he do? He ran to him. He got up and he ran to him. And it's such a beautiful picture of what God does with us and how the Father longs to have connection with us and that we can have connection with him. And then we looked at the story in Acts chapter 2, which was the birth of the Christian church. And uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47, talks about how the Holy Spirit came upon them. And it says that they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayers, and awe came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and their belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any who had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, spending time in God's word together and breaking bread in their homes, eating together, sharing a meal together, connecting with one another. They received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Why do you think people were getting saved by what they were doing? Anyone? This is going to be an interactive sermon today. I'm going to ask for you to speak up and tell me your thoughts. I think that they were getting saved because they saw the love between one another. They saw the church having love for one another and caring for one another and doing things together and having a bond with one another. And the people around them were hungry for that. How do you think we're doing with that today? I'll just drop that right there. So as we said, today is um, Next Gen Sunday, but my focus today is really going to be on connecting with your purpose, which that's another core element of Rooted, is connecting with God, connect with the church, connect with your purpose. So if you want to go ahead and pull out your Bibles, we are going to, our, our main scripture today is going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And if you don't have a Bible, gosh, we would really love to give one to you. We have several to just give away. So if that's you and you would like to have a Bible, just raise up your hands and ushers will come by and give one to you. Otherwise, we will also have the scriptures on the screen and you are welcome to follow along there. So before we start, I, I want to take a moment and just pause to sit before the Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just thank you for your presence here. We thank you for your kindness and your goodness towards us. We thank you that your word, your word comes to teach us and to challenge us. And we open up our hearts today to you. I pray you give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying to your church today. Help us respond to the leading of your spirit and respond to you. God, we give you our, our lives today. We really lay ourselves down. And I say, have your way. Have your way in me. Here I am, Lord. Send me. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, how many of you like to receive gifts? Anybody? You like gifts? Oh, yeah, lots of hands up for the gifts. I like gifts. Birthdays, anniversaries, Christmas, Father's Day, Mother's Day. Gifts are fun. And my favorite one is the, I just was thinking about you, and so I got you this nice little gift. Those are always really fun. Gifts are amazing things. They can make you feel loved. They can make you feel very accepted by the person giving it to you. They can make you feel like somebody really knows you. When someone gives you that perfect gift, that one thing that when you were walking through the store, you're like, ooh, I really like this. You're like, hey, honey, look at this. This is so cool. This would look so cute on our mantle. And you set it down. And six months later, he walks in and hands it to you. And you go, oh, so great. I remember one time I was with my mom, and we were at a bridal shower. And um, I, I, my dad was a bit of a cheapskate and didn't really pay attention a whole lot to what my mom wanted. He was very bad at gifts, which is bad because my mom's love language is gift receiving. So we're, we're at this bridal shower. I know, it's crazy. He did learn it eventually, and he got real good at it. But we were at this bridal shower, and we're sitting there, and the bride opens up this beautiful, like, crystal etched glass vase. And my mom said to me, I heard my mom say, oh, that is so beautiful. I have always wanted one of those. And so I just kind of tucked that back in my mind. And about three months later, I was at Ross. And I was looking around, and I saw this beautiful etched glass vase. And I'm like, oh, my mom is going to love this. So I bought it for her. It cost me all of 10 bucks. It wasn't even expensive. I take it, I wrap it. I take it home. I give it to her. No reason. It wasn't her birthday. I just gave it to her. She opened it up, and you know what she did? She cried. She cried and said to me, I think this is the best gift I have ever received. A $10 vase. Why? Because I listened to her, and I heard her heart, and I heard what she wanted, and I gave her that thing, and it made her feel known, and it made her feel loved. Did you guys know that God gives us gifts? He gives us gifts. Can you think of some uh, of gifts that he might give us? Go ahead. Life. Life is a gift. Amen. Peace, love, grace, health, strength. So many gifts he gives us. Here's one, salvation. It's not something we can earn. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9 says, By grace you have been saved through faith. And it's not your own doing, it's a gift of God. Not a result of your works, so that no one can boast. You know what else is a gift from the Lord? Eternal life. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says, The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know what else is a gift? This is a good one. It's the ability to make money. That is a gift. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says this, You may say to yourself, my power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth from me. But remember, the Lord your God, it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. James chapter 1, 17 says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation 
or shadow of turning. He gives us gifts. He gives us gifts in the spiritual and he gives us gifts in the natural. He has a purpose for giving us each one, these, a purpose for giving us each one of these gifts to us. Get my words out here. And just as a spoiler, it's not just for you to feel good about yourself. I know, right? He gives us gifts so that you will use them to serve the body. So now we're at our text, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm going to read from starting in verse 4. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. So let's talk about some of the, type, some of the gifts he gives us, okay? First, there's natural gifts. Let's talk about some of the natural gifts. Have you ever met somebody who has a natural ability to pick up something and just do it? Like maybe it's, it's sports or chess or math or musical instruments. Or if you're Pastor Mike, you can pretty much do just about any of those things. <laughs> Public speaking, persuasion. Ooh, some people are really gifted with persuasion. Persistence, leadership, those are all things that can be natural gifts that are inside of somebody. A natural gift or a natural talent is something that you would uh, um, allow you to demonstrate some immediate skill without practice or a skill that you gain rapidly with minimal practice. It's something that someone might say, oh, you're just a natural at that. That natural talent is often comes either genetically or environmentally. It's developed in your life. Uh, perhaps your family is really into sports. Maybe you were born tall so you could play basketball. Maybe you were born strong. Maybe you were born more flexible or faster than other people. Maybe your parents spoke a second language at home and you learned it from, a young, from being a young child. Maybe your parents were musicians and had you playing instruments and music from an early age. Those are all some natural and environmental ways that you can ha gain aptitude in your natural gift. So everyone, just about everybody's born with some sort of aptitude for something, wouldn't you say? We all have some sort of gift in us. And, and, or, or maybe a drawing to a particular interest. So think about it for a minute. What's, what are some of your natural talents? Just think about it. Something that maybe others struggle with, but you find to be pretty easy. When you take that God-given gift and you spend time developing it and learning it and practicing it, you know what it becomes? It becomes a skill. And it becomes something really useful in both the natural and the spiritual. So these are the things that God has called us to use for his service. The musicians that we had up here, Joey, my husband, and Janie, they have some natural talent and aptitude towards their instrument. They were drawn to it when they were young. They began to play. But their skill at their instrument came with time and practice and hours and hours of practice and time and practice and time and study and practice and time. And they developed that natural gift into a very good skill. And I'll tell you this, skill will always outshine natural ability. And that's true in every area. Someone with no natural talent at all, who practices really hard and works really hard at something, will develop vastly more skill than somebody who has natural ability and does nothing with it. But when you can take your natural gifts and your natural abilities and bring them together with your skill and your talent, and then it's something that you love to do, now that right there, that's the sweet spot. That's the spot where you can find yourself doing something you don't even try, and you find so much joy in it. It doesn't, it doesn't d deplete you or drain you. It energizes you. I love those. 
And when you can find that, that right there, that's a gift from the Lord. What do you say? People say you should do what you love to do for a job and you'll never work a day in your life. If you find what you love to do, that's true. Now, God also gives us spiritual gifts. So those were the natural gifts and the talents that we develop. And he also gives us spiritual gifts. These are, uh, so you might ask, what is a spiritual gift? So I found this definition, and, and, and I think this is really perfect. A spiritual gift is a special divine empowerment dis, uh, bestowed on a believer by the Holy Spirit to accomplish a given ministry God's way according to his grace and discernment to be used within the context of the body of Christ. Let's read it again because I think it's really good. A spiritual gift is a special divine empowerment bestowed on a believer by the Holy Spirit to accomplish a given ministry God's way according to his grace and discernment to be used within the context of the body of Christ. When you give your heart to Jesus, you receive the gift of salvation and you also receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit then lives in you. He equips you. He gives you power to accomplish things that you can't do on your own. In the same way that our natural talents or gifts are just there and you can't earn them, they just happen, spiritual gifts are also just in you. They just come with the Holy Spirit. When you get saved and you get filled with the Spirit, you're going to get gifts because the Holy Spirit's in you. You can't earn them. You can't learn them. However, they do need to be practiced and developed the same way your natural talents would be practiced and developed over time and by using them. So what are some of the spiritual gifts that God gives us? So there are several passages in Scripture that list out various gifts that we receive from the Holy Spirit. If you're writing down notes, I'm just going to tell you a few of them. Romans chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Ephesians 4 verses 7 through 13, and 1 Peter 4.11 are some of the primary verses that uh, list out some of the spiritual gifts that we receive. So I'm going to just hit on a few. This is not a comprehensive list. Uh, this is meant to be used as examples of the gifts that the Lord gives. So you'll also notice that many of these gifts from the Lord will also mesh well with the natural talents that you know are in you. Some of them, there might, you might even do in some of these things as your job, which is pretty cool. So the first one is administration. This is when the Spirit enables certain believers or Christians to organize, administrate, and promote the various affairs of the local, Christian, of the local church's ministry and to direct them effectively. And I'm just going to say the local church, our church can't grow without people. <laughs> our church can't grow beyond a certain point without the ministry of these people. We need people to do administrative work, administrate, help organize, facilitate. The next one is discernment. This is a divine strength or ability to spiritually identify falsehood, to distinguish between right and wrong motives, and the spiritual forces at work in various situations. I, I would also venture to say that discernment is also... Um, an unusual wisdom to know the right direction to go in a certain situation. Isn't necessarily just the, the spiritual aspect of things, but it's being able to hear God's voice and help provide direction. The next one is evangelism. Evangelism is when the spirit burdens particular believers about soul winning and then empowers them to share the gospel to unbelievers and to help them take necessary steps to be born again and then it says it burdens them about soul winning. That's the big part. I wanted to hit that again. All Christians are called to share your faith. Whether you have a gift of, of evangelism or not. But for these people, they are very burdened with it. Exhortation is our next one. The divine strength or ability to strengthen, comfort, and urge others to action through written or spoken word and biblical truth. The Spirit enables them to deliver challenging and encouraging words to people, usually laced with love. Faith. Ooh, the gift of faith is a good one. 
The Spirit provides certain believers with great confidence to believe and expect great things from God. Such a good one. How many of you are hearing some of you yourself in these? Anybody hearing some things that you recognize in you? Good. Giving. The gift of giving is, is the divine strength or ability to produce wealth and to give by tithes and offerings for the purpose of advancing the kingdom of God on earth. How many of you find yourself like, I really don't have a lot of money, but that person really needs something and I want to give it to them. I want to help them. That's a gift from the Lord. Mercy. The Spirit enables certain Christians to minister to and have compassion for and to minister to those who are suffering and afflicted or hurting. The pastor or shepherd. The Spirit enables certain believers to preach the word and teach the word and to take responsibility for the spiritual welfare of a body of believers. And I'm just going to say this right here. We have been blessed with pastors who have such a heart of love and caring for our congregation. I am so grateful for our pastors. Leadership. Leadership is a spiritual gift of leadership. It's closely related to the gift of administration. And interestingly, the gift of pastor and shepherd, which makes sense, right? The word means to lead, to assist, to protect, and to care for others. Serving or ministering. Any act of service done with genuine love for the edification of the community. (laughs) I like that one. (laughs) We are all called to serve. Some of us have a drive to serve, right? Some of us are like, I am not happy unless I am doing something to serve somebody because that's what I want to do. Those with this gift are, of service are often committed to spread, are, are very committed to spread the gospel by serving others in, the, in a way that benefit the other people with different gifts and ministries that, are, that aren't, that like the other people have more public ministries and they serve those people. Okay, one more. Teaching. The divine strength or ability to study and learn from the scriptures, primarily to bring understanding and depth to other Christians. That's teaching. Now, I I recognize myself in some of these, and I know you guys all recognize yourself in some of these, right? And this is not an exhaustive list of the gifts that God gives us that he wants us to use to serve the body with. Now, you have all the gifts. What are you supposed to do with them? That is the big question. And that, discovering this, this right here is where you find your purpose. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Again, verse 4. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all in us. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit. Why? Let's hear it. For the common good. It's for the common good. They're given for the benefit of the people that are sitting in this room. They're given for the benefit of the kids that are in that classroom. You're given to the benefit of the youth that are in here learning about the Lord. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of us, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Galatians chapter 5.13, For you are called to freedom, brothers, But do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. He's called us to use our gifts to serve him and serve the church. Beloved, the Lord knows you. He knows you. He knows what makes you tick. He knows the things that you're interested in. He knows the longings of your heart. He knows your personality. He knows the things that just turn your crank, that get you excited. He gives you gifts to mix with those things, those natural talents and your personality. He takes your personality and your desires and your drive and your natural abilities and he mixes it all together with these spiritual gifts so that you can serve him and serve the church. It's this mix that makes you and your gift unique in our body. 
It's this gift that makes you and your, your abilities unique in this body. Romans 12, 1, and then verse 4 and 6, 4 through 6 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. And then verse 4, For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given us, let us use them. Amen? And then we also look at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 15 and 16. We are to grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. When each part is properly working, it makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. So you have something to bring to the body. You have something to bring to to the Lord, an offering that you can give of your service that no one else has. And if you are not using your gifts in that service, the rest of us are missing out on what you have to offer. And our body is not functioning to its full capacity. If you're a foot, we're limping. If you're in ACL, we're not able to support ourselves. If you're a hand, we're not touching people. If you're an eye, we're not seeing the spirit realm and what the Lord has for us. Our body is not functioning at its full capacity because you aren't functioning in your full capacity. So I'm going to ask you a question. How are you using your gifts to benefit the body? How are you using your gifts to benefit the body? Our church mission is to preach the whole gospel to the whole person. And we do this by making disciples who make disciples. That's our mission. And if Living Water Yelm is your home, then you're part of this family and you have a role to play in this body. And it's your mission too. So beloved, your mission is to preach the gospel to the whole person, the whole gospel to the whole person. And you do that by making disciples who make disciples. It's who we are. That is who we are. That is who you are. So now you're asking me, how do I do that, Pastor Beth? (laughs) I know you're thinking that. You, you, You do it by using your gifts to serve the body. You get involved. You volunteer. You don't come to church on a Sunday morning and sit and leave every week. That's how you do it. Do you play an instrument or sing? Hey, we've got a worship team that needs worship leaders and instruments, musicians. Are you skilled with computers or technology? We have a tech team that needs help. Maybe you love to cook. We have a hospitality team that that makes food in between services for those that are here for all the services. We need somebody to serve in that capacity. Maybe you love to pray and you have a gift of faith. Ooh, we have a great prayer team. Maybe you're artistic and you like to decorate. You see these pretty decorations up here? Our sweet friend, Dory, who moved away to Arizona, came back to decorate for us. Because we need somebody to step up and do this. (laughs) She didn't come back just for that, but she does come back and do that for us. Do you enjoy kids and teens? So much. That right there, ooh, that makes my heart warm. We have entire ministries that need your help. Maybe you have no idea what your gifts are. Maybe you have no clue what you want to do. 
you know what? We can help you. We can help you find out what those things are. We can help you find that. We can help you give, we can give you opportunity to try different areas to serve and find out what you like and what clicks in your heart. We can help you find a place to serve in the body. So Joey and Jamie, would you guys come up? So today's Next Gen Sunday. Probably wondering when I was going to get to that, right? (laughs) Well, as Pastor Mike said, for the past five years, I've been serving in the church as the worship director and worship leader. And it's been really one of the most, some of the most fulfilling and challenging times of my life. (laughs) I have loved it. I have connected with people and built relationships that are so valuable to me. And a few months ago, I began to feel that stirring of the Holy Spirit, that tugging that said, change is coming. I've got something else for you. And he had a new assignment for me. And here I am transitioning over to be the director over our children and youth ministries. So what does that mean to you? That means you won't see me up here leading worship very often, maybe occasionally. It means that you'll hear me talk a lot about the value and importance of pouring into and training up our next generation. Hey, ushers, you can go ahead and start handing those cards out. The truth is, and I fully believe this, the health of our church is directly linked to the health of our youth and children's ministries. I want you to hear that again. The health of our church is directly linked to the health of our youth and our children's ministries. We have the opportunity to impact entire families by teaching their young people that God is with them and that the Holy Spirit is in them. When you impact kids, you impact families. When you impact families, you impact communities. When you impact communities, you impact the future. If you want to see change happen in our world, it starts with our kids starts with our kids. Now it's clear to me, you guys can be real quiet. We are getting closer and closer to Jesus coming back. Wouldn't you say that's true? You see the signs of the times. They're all around us. The stage is set. World events are escalating. Pressure is increasing. There's an entire world out there that doesn't know the hope of the gospel. There are schools that are missing the light of the Christian faith because parents have pulled their kids out. It is a mission field of young people who need to hear the gospel. It is a mission field of young people who live in families that are struggling. They need the hope that we offer them. The best way to do that is to equip our children to take that hope into the schools. It's to equip our kids to carry their faith with them. It's to teach our kids that they don't have a junior Holy Spirit. They can encounter God in a personal way, in powerful ways. They can go to their friends who are injured and sick and they can pray for them and see signs and wonders happen. They have faith to believe that God will do these things because we teach it to them. They can be a light and bring hope to their friends. They can stand up for who they are in the face of whatever comes their way. But in order for our kids To have that in them, we got to have people to teach them. We need people that are willing to help. To volunteer, to serve them and help them to grow in their faith. And it starts from the infant. Man, those kids are like sponges. They take in what you give and they believe like that. And their faith is just growing and growing. They haven't been fed all the other theologies and all the other things around them. They just believe you because you're their parents, because you show them love, because you look them in the eye and you connect with them on their level. And I'm so grateful for the people that serve inside our schools. 
the teachers, the paraeducators. You're carrying the light of Jesus to these kids and you are impacting their lives every day. We need people to disciple our kids here at the church. We need people who are willing to give their time and to show those kids that they're important. And honestly, you don't need a special skill to serve in children's or youth ministries. You really don't. All you need to do is say yes. We'll teach you what to do. We'll give you all the things that you need. We will equip you. We'll provide you with all of that stuff. We'll help you be successful. We're not going to put you in to fail, okay? And I know kids can be intimidating. I get it. But you know what? They're really just full of love, and they're loads of fun. So there are some areas in children's ministries that we need help. So it's Next Gen Sunday. I'm going to talk about kids' ministries, and I'm going to talk about our need. Every Sunday in our children's ministry alone, we need 10 to 15 people volunteering at each service. That's 30 people a week. Since we got back from, since the shutdown, we've had about five, eight, maybe. We've had classes that we've had to combine so the ages aren't getting the the information that's most relevant to their age. We have need in our check-in area to help families check in and get their kids to the right classroom. We need someone who will be a curriculum coordinator. (laughs) I know that sounds like a big job. It is a big job. It might be the biggest job in children's ministry right now that we have need for. Someone who can print the curriculum, pick which activities they're going to do, print out the activities and the crafts. These are the things that are reinforced, used to reinforce the lesson that they're hearing. We need some people to help us with decorating. You don't even have to be in the classroom. I need people to paint. I need people to build some stuff in there. I, want to, I have vision. I have ideas. I have things that I want to turn our children's area into like a party room. I want the kids to walk in there and go, yes, this is made for me. Not just plain white walls. If you can do that, I, can, I would love to talk to you. We have youth events. They have their weekly Bible study that they do every week on Sunday mornings. We want to start doing more. We want to start doing a midweek service. We want to start doing events and and camps and all these different ideas that we have. We want their own, we want to have a worship team for them so they can do live worship together. Wouldn't that be amazing? Our kids need that. We need small group leaders for our youth. In fact, coming up, On um, October 22nd through the 24th, I'm taking the middle school kids to a retreat. So if you have a middle schooler, you have kids you know that are middle schoolers, we want you guys to bring your kids to this retreat. We have some information back in the the youth room. They've got some flyers. It's $136 for the weekend. It's right here in Yelm at Cascades Camp. We're joining with a a whole other denomination, but I want to take our kids because I want to connect with them. We're going to be doing lots of special events, summer camps, VBS, Kids Day, movie nights, pumpkin patch bash. I want to do the pumpkin patch bash. But we need people to volunteer. Are you willing? Are you ready to say yes to Jesus? So our biggest need right now is for people to just say yes and be willing to serve at least one Sunday a month. One service, one Sunday a month. That's not a huge ask. One service, one Sunday a month. And if you, can't, if you don't want to do children's ministry, that's fine. We have lots of areas that need, have need. You see this card? We just handed these out. See these boxes? These are all different ministry areas that need, have need for people to volunteer. We need people to run sound. We need people to help run the slides. We need people to come during the week and clean the church. We need people to, to help with greeting and prayer and Worship. Our church isn't functioning at its full capacity because you're not functioning in yours. All right, so one last verse. Matthew chapter 9, verses 35 through 38. Jesus went throughout the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom 
and healing every disease and every affliction. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. So, beloved, what are your gifts and how are you using them to serve the body? Let's pray. Jesus, you have a sense you're speaking to us. I hear you speaking to us. You're calling us to respond to your presence and your word. You're using the gift in me of exhortation to encourage and to challenge your church today. Come and speak to us. As we're singing this song, I want to ask you to talk to the Lord. We're not even going to put the words up because I want you to sit and talk to the Lord and ask him, where is he calling you to serve? Where can you serve? Fill out your little card. And when you're dismissed today, hand it to one of the ushers or bring it to me. Amen.